Okay, I am here with, well, normally I say the amazing, the talent, there's not enough words Ooh. to describe this guy. I've been spending quite a lot of time with him today and um, I'm more amazed than I was when I got here. He's done so much more than I ever realized, but it's the amazing, the incredible, talented, Ooh. funny, smart, Wow. And I have to I'm say... I'm going to leave after that. <laughs> I have to say, really nice, friendly guy. Oh, cool. Carmine. Oh, nice to meet piece. you. Nice to meet you, sir. Okay, Carmine, what I want to ask you is, chronologically, can you tell us, you know, all the artists or the ones that you can remember that you've played with? Because I know... I knew you'd played with a lot of people, and I, but I didn't actually realise, right. you know... How, I mean, everybody. if you want... Everybody would be... Uh, it'd be hard to remember everybody, but uh, I'll try. Let me see. I played with, uh, in bands, uh, would, uh, Vanilla Fudge was the first band. After Vanilla Fudge was Cactus. Then Jeff Beck and Beck Bogart in the piece. Then a band called KGB with Mike Bloomfield and Rick Gretsch. Then Rod Stewart for seven years. Then Ted Nugent. Then Ozzy. Then my group King Cobra. Then my group uh, with John Sykes and Tony Franklin, Blue Murder. And then, and, and this brings us up to around to the 90s when I started playing with Edgar Winter for three years. And then uh, that was pretty much all the bands as bands. And then later, like in the 2000s, I think it was 2004, I started a group with uh, me and Pat Travis, called it uh, Travis and the Peace TNA. Like <laughs> we used to say everybody needs a little TNA every day. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, then I did album kind of bands that we never really toured with, uh, but I did some touring with uh, an album I did with Rick Derringer called DNA, Derringer and the Peace back in the 80s, and we toured Japan and toured America with that. So I was Rick Derringer, and then, um, let's see who else did I miss? That's like mostly the touring kind of the, stuff. The, 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 kind of the core of it. Yeah, and those are the touring things. And then I did you know, album stuff with like, you know, all those bands, plus I did um, like uh, Ronnie Wood's album. I played on a track with Jeff Beck and Stanley Clark. Um, I did that stuff with Eddie Money, Jan Ackerman, he's another guitarist I played with that I Focus, forgot about. Yeah. Um, and just a lot of, a lot of odd, and then Sessions, Pink Floyd. Well, I was just about to say yeah. to you, actually, yeah. a lot of people probably don't realize that you played with Pink Floyd. Tell, tell us yeah, about that. Um, that was on, uh, Dogs of War, A Momentary Lapse of Reason. And it's just funny how it happened because um, I came home one day, you know, I was in the 80s and I had a message machine and on the message machine, hi, this is Bob Ezrin. I'm producing a band that's just screaming for Carmine Drumfields. And I said, <laughs> wow, okay. So I called Bob up and I said, hey, Bob's Carmine, what's up? She goes, yeah, I want, I want you to see if you're available on, you know, such a date or around that time to come in and do a session with me. I said, well, who's the band? And he said, Pink Floyd. I said, where's Nick? <laughs> he said, well, Nick is sort of, you know, been racing his cars and his calluses are soft and, you know, and I'd like to bring in some new blood just to, to give him a little new energy to, to this track. And I said, well, okay. So when I went in, it was, uh, I had my roadie deliver the drums and, and uh, you know, David Glimmer was there, and uh, and Tony um, Levin, the bass player. Right. And uh, I'm not sure if the keyboard player was there or not. Uh, I don't think he was, but they had a four track with the song on it. And so Bob said, look, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna play this to you with a click, and you just play along, and I'm just gonna keep recording it. So I said, okay, and, uh, and it got weird because, you know, after playing, you know, if you know, if you ever record in the studio, you know, you get louder and louder, and, and the cans are so loud that you start getting a headache in the back of your head, you know, because mm. of the volume. So, and then also what happens is your ears start closing up from the top end. So uh, after a while, I couldn't hear the click good, you know, and I was like having a problem with it. And then Bob came out and said, this is what you do. Get some tissue paper and stick it in your ears and knocks out the top end. You'll be able to hear everything again. I said, okay. So I did that. He was right. So f from then on, 1987 until this day, I always record with some tissue paper in my ear and I don't get the headache anymore. Oh, and it just kind of focuses the, the, the sound it, it a little bit? It gets rid of the high end that's damaging, you know, that goes right into ears and it gives you this pounding headache, you know, for me anyway. Yeah. So I, so I did it and then, you know, I, I, I recorded something like, 
on 24 track, we did, I believe, two to four reels of just me playing this song over and over and over. So he said, and then we'll edit it together, which is fair enough. I said, okay, so like, how long would it take? Oh, it'll be a while. So, you know, we're working on this album for a while. So I call him up, I don't know how long it was, a couple of months later. So how's it sound? You got it together? Because in a word, daring. <laughs> I said, okay, great. So when can I hear it? I'm still working on it. I call him up a little later. How's it sound? Really energetic. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on.